Uh, let's go to Pahoa. Anybody in Pahoa wishing to testify this morning? Good morning. Good morning. No testifiers in Pahoa this morning. Thank you very much. Then we'll go down to Na'alehu. Aloha, Sandy. I want to thank all of the representatives and the senator who was able to make it today. We had seven confirmed. Unfortunately, Cindy Evans sends her regrets that she had to catch a flight to Oahu this morning. And Senator Inouye had a death in the family that she's dealing with. So we want to send her our deepest sympathies to her and her ohana on that. But um, today we have Representative Lowen in Kona. Uh, Representative Todd confirmed also, and he hopefully will be here shortly. Uh, Representative Cregan, Representative Onishi, and Senator Rudiman are here. So if you want to come and take seats here at the table and we can share the mics. Your updates will help, oh, give us the opportunity um, in advance to be able to, if we need to have legislation drawn up to support any of your efforts. Or um, giving the public some information uh, that they may want to gear up for whether it's supporting some environmental issues, whatever it is. We want to just get an open dialogue here so we know how to uh, better uh, maybe support any of the efforts that will have direct impacts, not on just our island, uh, but for the state of Hawaii as well. We can start with the person in the middle first, uh, Senator Rudiman. And then uh, we can switch off however you guys want to do it. And, you know, just we're here and to don't get an. Senate, uh, Representative Lowen in Kona. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, we love this video conferencing system so that we can uh, stay on all sides of the island. And we envy your video conferencing system. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> uh, well, I guess what, what I should start with is the. Um, the things that I'll be pushing hard on next year. And I'm, of course, happy to answer any questions if I've uh, forgotten any subjects. One thing I'll be pushing on is a statewide uh, direct initiative, citizens initiative. As you know, we have a referendum on the county level, but not at the statewide level. And it's my hope that uh, maybe by having that, we can have uh, participative democracy to address some issues that the legislature has failed to address and continues to fail to address. So that's one of my uh, big good government sort of issue initiatives. I also will be focusing on trying to pass a $15 an hour minimum wage for our state. And I'm very interested in any support that I can get on that. I feel it's important. Uh, I feel like I have a role to play in that discussion for two reasons. One is I have a lot of employees and you would think I would oppose it and I can address all the concerns that business people might have. I think it's really good for business, not bad for business. Um, moreover, it's good for our society, and I think it's a way to lift hundreds of thousands of people out of poverty and virtually solve our homeless problem. And when I look in our toolbox, what do we have to address poverty and homelessness? There's nothing that's, that, that makes the difference that that makes. So that, that's something we can do like that and make a dramatic difference in our society. I know it comes with some controversy, but I think the benefits greatly outweigh the negatives. I'm constantly trying to push on decriminalizing or making legal cannabis in our state, and I will once again propose a bill to allow the counties to legalize or decriminalize cannabis, if, since the state does not seem to want to do so. We will also revisit the issue of rat lungworm uh, especially the UHH Rat Lungworm Lab funding for it. You folks are all aware of that. If, if there's any information I can provide about what happened to the funding last year, I'm happy to do so. But we had a bill that went all the way through the House and the Senate for 600000 It never got a single no vote in any committee or on the floor and was killed in conference committee through some very dirty business, uh, which harms our community, especially here on the Big Island. So we will, of course, resubmit that, and we would love support for that. And I know the council, I believe, is stepping up and helping the lab in its own ways. Um, besides the rail tax, the big issue from last year that remains unresolved, I think, is medical aid in dying, also called physician-assisted suicide or death with dignity. And that's the idea that with a lot of safeguards in place, a person of sound mind facing a terminal diagnosis can have their doctor prescribe life-ending drugs, drugs without the doctor getting in trouble, without losing all their insurance benefits. 
uh, like five other states have done, and Oregon is famous for having it. In Oregon, where they've had this available for more than five years, about 20 people a year take advantage of it, just to put it in perspective. Uh, that was a really big overarching uh, issue that died without a vote and without an explanation last year. So we'll, I think we'll re re revisit it. Other things we will revisit, I think, are a, some version of the tiny houses bill or something to help ag housing or housing in general. But uh, as I th think you all know, we had a bill for uh, small houses on ag projects last year that you folks supported. And it went all the way through, but was vetoed by the governor. And let me just say, because I've heard it questioned, you've, this council uh, provided a resolution in support of that bill. And uh, al although the governor ended up vetoing it, that resolution was instrumental in changing that bill's fate in the committee. I was there in the Ag Committee when they were two chairs were about to kill it. and. Um, Representative Evans brought me in. It was almost like the cavalry brought me in a copy of this resolution you guys had passed two days before, which I hadn't seen yet. I handed it to the chairs, and they changed their mind on the spur of the moment to let the Hawaii County go ahead with this. So, so on the one hand, I want to say your resolutions matter, and your your voices matter at the at the legislature. I saw it firsthand. Secondly, I, th I hope we'll revisit it. I think the governor vetoed it because it did not have the support of our county administration. And if we're going to get that passed on a statewide level, I, we need to include the county administration and get their support going forward. Um, and lastly, I'll be working to move forward a, a proposal for an agricultural park in Lower Puna. I got money for it this past year, which was already released. So I'll be working with the Department of Ag to try to get that going. But we will need, we will hope for county cooperation and support in that regard. I'm probably leaving out some stuff, but I'll yield the mic at this point and happy to answer any questions. And thank you so much for having this discussion, by the way. Thank you, thank you Senator uh, Ruderman. Okay, uh, mahalo for being patient with us. I'm gonna go over to Kona, Aloha uh, Rep Loin. Uh, good morning, mahalo for being here. Let's see, so it's a bit early. I'll list a few things. This isn't everything and, you know, things could change, but, uh, you know, if, I'm, if something is not on this list, it doesn't mean I don't support it. Um, so starting with the, um, I guess, uh, CIP and funding specifically for District 6 that I'll be seeking, I um, think uh, one of the, the priorities this year will include like uh, funding for furnishings and equipment for the courthouse, which should be completed, uh, I think in uh, 20, end of 2018, 2019. And then for the harbor, for the sewer line connecting Honokohau Harbor, to Kealakehe wastewater treatment plants that'll connect it up to the highway. And then last year we got funds for planning and design for a West Hawaii Veterans Center. So this would be seeking funds for construction of that facility so they can move forward. Um, you know, we'll keep pushing for Kua, a lifeguard at Kua Bay. We really need that. I, it's frustrating that, you know, we've been pushing for this for five years or more now and still not funded, but we're gonna keep trying. Um, on the finance committee, I'll still be doing all the grants and aid for another year. So, um, you know, I do see part of my job is to look at the big picture of the whole state, but part of that job also is to make sure I'm taking care of Big Island. Uh, there's not that many Big Island residents on the finance committee. Um, and so I think we've got to kind of make hay while the sun shines and while someone's in that position. Uh, as far as legislation, um, you know, I would support $15 an hour minimum wage and some of those bigger picture things, but I think I'm going to focus more on uh, the specific uh, local issues uh, for my priorities today. So uh, I'd like us to pass the Hawaii Invasive Species Authority Bill. That was uh, the first recommendation that came out of the interagency biosecurity plan. I thought it would move last year and it didn't, but that will be like a step forward in implementing that plan and getting a better hip and more proactive handle on invasive species issues. Um, then also on that list would be getting some funding for a little fire ant, um, maybe both for education and outreach so people uh, know what to do and how to test and then also continuing the voucher system if that's been successful. Um, Coffee Berry Borer, we passed a bill last year that extends out the sunset date a couple years because it took a long time to get that program operational. So we just need to ensure it has adequate funding until that sunset date. Um, and then I think we'll also be looking, I'm not sure exactly what step the steps will be, but we definitely need to tackle affordable housing and homeless. That's a, a huge issue 
and we've got to work on it. Um, see, on the energy committee, I think one of the big things we need to do is look at incentives for energy storage. So people can um, move to like a solar plus battery backup and utility scale storage for um, you know, anyone who wants to invest in that kind of project so that we can capture the renewable energy we're creating during the day and be able to use it on in the evening and continue to move off of fossil fuel. And then we'll probably also be discussing again, uh, both like how we can move towards cleaner transportation, more renewable fuel transportation, and then also looking at the gas tax. And I think on both of those questions, the important thing is gonna be to make sure that we consider the different situations on different islands. So what's fair, what works for Oahu might feel unfair to a big island where we drive a lot more miles. So we just gotta look at that and make sure um, that that works. Uh, let's see. I'm hoping we can move forward with doing an all mail in voting program. Uh, a few states have done this and it's successfully increased voter turnout. Um, so that would be where every registered voter is automatically mailed a ballot. Um, and then there wouldn't be the election day polls like there are now. And then finally, I hope that uh, we can look at some options for TAT and putting that to rest for once and for all and getting some more funds back to the county. Um, one idea I've been considering is um, if part of that funding, if we return funding to the counties and then tie part of that funding to specific things uh, that might make it uh, something that we can get support from people who wouldn't have supported it in the past. So um, if we tied part of it, for example, to um, hiring people to enforce on illegal vacation rentals and short term rentals, or if we tied part of it to funding for mass transit and the bus system. Those are just some ideas. There's not a bill drafted yet because it's still relatively early. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things I'm working on and happy to answer questions when everybody has their turn. So thank you. Thank you, mahalo for your update. Um, next up we can have Raponishi. Hey, um, thank you very much for the invitation to come and meet with you. Um, I first wanted to go over current district projects. So my district is from High High Street out to Honoapu in Ka'u. Um, along the Volcano Highway, I have the Upper Puna subdivisions, Volcano subdivisions um, within the district. Um, so projects that we have worked on and are in the hopper, so to speak, uh, Four Mile Bridge, which is at the bottom of High High Street, uh, we got funding, $13 million, for that project to replace the bridge. Um, we are waiting on um, the, I guess, County Public Works and Historic Preservation for determination on the historic bridge issue, um, but also Public Works in terms of looking at uh, the scope of the project. and. I don't know if some of you know, but because of the relocation of the fire department, uh, the fire station, that intersection now becomes a potential problem with the fire trucks trying to make the turn onto the bridge. So that's a high priority project. Um, for Panaeva Stretch, we got uh, uh, funding for acceleration and deacceleration lanes much like those that were um, at the uh, UH Ag Park. Uh, we got $2 million uh, for that project. Uh, that's for Mamaki and Lama Streets. Uh, Kulani Correctional Facility, we got funding for a full-time farm manager and also for uh, equipment and supplies uh, costs. In that bill, I'm working closely with Representative Takayama, who's the chair of uh, public safety. And we also included a full-time farm manager for Waiava Prison. And we just began that project up at uh, Kulani, or restarted that program, I guess, uh, with the cooperation of Hawaii Community College. <coughs> uh, we had a project to provide a full-time farm manager for Hawaii Community College at the UH Ag Park um, and also equipment and supplies 
so that they would be able to upgrade the park and upgrade equipment there. Unfortunately, that uh, funding bill died, and so we'll be pushing that again. Uh, in the KKP complex schools, um, I have all of the schools except for the Pahoa schools and Keone Poco within the district. And uh, we've provided funding over the last four years for various projects at the schools. Uh, some are health and safety, some are just basic improvements. Um, and also we got funding to address the parking issue at Waikeauka uh, Park. As some of you may know, uh, most of the, the users of the park park along Ainaola, and that creates a very hazardous condition, especially for young children. So um, there is some vacant property around the, the gym and the baseball fields. And so we secured uh, $600,000 to try to uh, secure land and uh, begin a development plan. Um, that's also um, you know, stalled because of we're still trying to negotiate with the landowner. Moving forward for 2018, um, projects that we are currently working on in the district um, there are two senior housing facilities within my district, one at Kiao uh, Town and one in Pahala, and both sadly are in um, tremendous need of repair and upgrade. So I've been working with the Hawaii Housing uh, to move those projects forward. Um, I yesterday, in fact, got assurance that hopefully Pahala will be done next year. Um, no guarantees, though, because I've been working on it for the last five years. Um, the KKP schools, every year I participate with the DOE's um, walkthrough of all of the schools within my district. Um, and that process is basically to look at prioritization of repair and maintenance projects and that would then be folded into the DOE's requests for repair and maintenance funds to the legislature. So I participated um, in all of the schools in the district in that walkthrough. So we have a list of projects that will be working with the DOE if it doesn't come up high on their priority list, then we may be introducing either C, uh, CIP projects or bills for funding. And then um, another major project that I'm trying to work on is the establishment of a community farm <coughs> or a residential community farm on land that belongs to the public safety department. Um, some of you may know it's called Field 33. It's almost 500 acres, I believe. And it's currently not used. It used to be used for their ag program uh, where they did their cattle and pig uh, farming and training. So uh, we're beginning discussions with PSD um, and uh, with various stakeholders about looking at establishing a community farming project where uh, inmates who have graduated from the Waiava or Kulani Ag Program will be able to do their probation, voluntary probation on this particular, in this particular project where they would be able to live in a farming community, share equipment, but also be provided uh, various amounts of land for them to establish their own farming skills. And hopefully that project then uh, will graduate them to the Ag Loan Program from the Department of Agriculture. So um, I'll stop there. Um, and again, I'm 
be, I'll be here to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Mahalo, Rep. Uh, good morning, Rep. Korean. Good morning, everybody. I met most of you uh, before. Uh, thank you for having us here. I think it's, it's very useful. And uh, I start off by just saying pretty much what they said. <laughs> I mean, fortunately for you, they've covered a lot of the stuff that they won't have to recover. So uh, I think one of the advantages of our legislative group is we work as a team and we tend to support each other's projects. And uh, we hope to, you know, and we work with you as a team. And uh, what uh, Senator Ruderman said about you supporting us with resolutions, it is very important. Uh, and I hope you can continue to do that because it really, it does help to give, uh, you know, it's not just us, it's the voice of the, of the people of the Big Island. And yeah, we meet every Thursday morning as a group to get together and talk about things like that. And, you know, you, you know I don't know how many of you can come over and do that, but, you know, two at a time or something. <laughs> you know, we'd be happy to have you there uh, on Thursday mornings to, to do that. And uh, I'm sorry that we're not going to particularly support the sunshine expansion to the legislature because I don't think it would work over there. Well, most of the things happen over there after dark, so anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, and after dark. Okay, so I guess this is being recorded and sent out, so I just wanted to say, you know, uh, you know, I've been in the legislature four sessions. This is my fifth session coming up. In the first three sessions, I was on health, human services, and housing, and then uh, in the afternoon on judiciary and consumer protection and commerce. So I, you know, I have experience on those committees. And since I'm a physician, the health was a big part of my, uh, you know, efforts over there. Last year was a big shift because I was appointed as chair of agriculture. I mean, I, you know, had lived on a farm in Cabo for 25 years and taking courses at UH Hilo uh, in agriculture. So, you know, I, I have as much background or more than almost anyone else in the legislature, except maybe Rep. Nishi, who has this little farm. <laughs> And, you know, we, but we are both very interested in agriculture. Uh, and the Big Island is so dominated by agriculture, that's important. Uh, so I'm chair of agriculture and expect to be chair this coming session. But I'm also on public safety and uh, Hawaiian uh, ocean affairs and Hawaiian uh, affairs, ocean marine resources and Hawaiian affairs, and then the afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm on uh, education, higher education. I'm trying to get, promote agriculture as a STEM subject in our schools. Uh, and, you know, integrate with the farm to school stuff. So, okay. So mo many of the things that were said, I support, you know, very heartily. I mean, I think it's time to do something on, uh, you know, promoting uh, the growth of, you know, cannabis, either in the form of marijuana or hemp. Uh, minimum wage, I think, you know, it, it's controversial, but I think, it, you know, again, the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, and, you know, supporting agriculture in general here, invasive species, all these things are critical. So I'm going to just say some of the things that they didn't say, <laughs> which leaves not too much left, actually. Okay. I will revisit the TAT and the rail situation. Okay. You're, you're certainly familiar with the special session, which increased the TAT tax in both the Wawa and neighbor islands, gave that increase to the rail project, and then capped the TAT to the county, decides boasting about the TAT was increasing 8% per year. I thought it was pretty... Egregious. Uh, you know, Mayor Caldwell claimed if we didn't give him the money he want, he would have to raise the property tax in Oahu. Well, Mayor Kim had to raise the property. You guys had to raise the property tax here because of that. I mean, in part because of that, because the TAT was capped and, and it wasn't expanded. And uh, we lost Cindy Evans as majority leader because of her no vote on that. And, uh, you know, I voted no as well. And I, because I thought the way it was, apart from the details, the way it was handled, I thought was... Uh, very not did not acknowledge the neighbor islands. So uh, it doesn't benefit the county to have the TNT increasing eight percent, which they're boasting about. Oh, this is a great source of funding. It's going to increase eight percent, and they cap it. They put a hard cap on it. So uh, you know, in looking at that issue and reviewing the history of the TAT, it's clear that it has to be uh, shared more widely with the, and fully with the counties. And I, I actually talked to Chair Luke, and I, I think she acknowledged that, that they made some errors in, in the way they handled that, and that they will revisit that. And how thoroughly, I don't know. But I, I think they're willing to get rid of that hard cap and increase the amount. And 
you know, if it's increasing 8% a year, it's a very valuable source of funds, right? And it shouldn't be capped because then you don't get that increase. So that's something that I think we, we all support, you know, in various ways. And uh, I sort of apologize we hadn't supported this fully in the past uh, because, you know, the finance people have so much power over there, we, it's hard to buck them on things like this. But, uh, you know, we will be <laughs> bucking them. Okay, so shifting to sort of agriculture and health are two of my priorities because I'm a physician and I'm a farmer, right? And I'm a, on the Ag Committee, but I can weigh in on things like the death and dignity, uh, aid and dying bill. And I think, you know, uh, that will move out of the Health Committee this year. We have a new chair, and then hopefully it'll come to full vote on the House floor. And I mean, it's not going to affect a huge number of people, but the way it's, it's going to have a major effect on the lives and deaths of, of those few. And, and I think it's, it's something that uh, definitely uh, should, be, should be passed this year. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just jump around a little bit here. One of the bills I would like to introduce is banning chlorpyrifos. Chlorpyrifos is a very potent, dangerous pesticide, insecticide, that is related to sarin gas. I mean, they, they act just the same way. Their, their research was, came from the same research. So, you know, the, the acute toxicity of the two are the same. They'll kill you the same way. Now, it's a little safer than sarin gas in terms of acute toxicity, uh, but, you know, it, uh, it works the same way. The, the other thing that uh, chlorpyrifos does is it causes injuries in the fetus, severe injuries, and that's called a teratogenic effect. So that was recognized here in the United States and New York when chlorpyrifos are used extensively in, through the buildings and apartments of roaches and other insects. So they banned, the EPA actually banned it for indoor use uh, in 2001. Europe was slower, but they've now banned it entirely except for one tiny use. Yeah. So uh, our EPA was supposed to issue a similar ban this year based on a huge body of research, but uh, our president appointed Scott Pruitt to the EPA and he stopped that ban. Our island actually is more chlorpyrifos than Kauai does, even with all the seed corn companies. So I, and it's, you know, there are safer things, there are replacement things for this, there are safer things. And, uh, you know, EPA was supposed to ban chlorpyrifos. But because of the, the appointment of Scott Pruitt, it was uh, stalled. And of course, Dow Chemical, the maker of chlorpyrifos, donated a million dollars to Trump's inauguration fund and the head of Dow was appointed to head up an industry advisory group. You know, all those things that are not very appealing about, the, you know, our current administration. So I, I plan to reinduce that, that bill this year because the EPA didn't do it. You know, last year they said, well, we're not going to pass it because the EPA is going to do it. So I'll, I'll reintroduce that. Now, I just, the Invasive Species Council should be come the way Invasive Species Authority that passed unanimously in, in all the committees, both houses, the Senate bill came over, the House, House went over the Senate. And, uh, you know, as things often happen, it died in conference because it didn't reach the clearance for finance. So, you know, I think we'll, it received unanimous support. It's a good thing to do. We need to d move forward with that. So I think this year, the way hopefully will be clear to get that done. And I, I think it is important because invasive species are very important for our state, but this island particularly. Little fire ant is a really dangerous thing. Rat lung disease is terrible. Kogi frogs is a major nuisance. You know, so there's a lot of things that need to be addressed in terms of uh, invasive species. Now, something that came up, um, I think O'Hara mentioned this t in an email to me, is restoring two positions in the health department. She actually, she mentioned one is the, uh, our island uh, district health officer should be a physician. That was the law or the rules, I'm not sure which one. But that was, it was recognized long ago that a physician should be uh, the district health officer to, because they'd be on, you know, they're on the ground, they're here, they recognize all the problems that uh, this island has and they can defend this island against the health department, which is so Oahu centric. And it worked very well for Maui with Lauren Pang and uh, you know, Kauai has a district health officer. So I'm gonna, you know, it, Partly, it, I only suggested, but I was going to do it anyway, is introduce a bill to mandate that there be a physician uh, hired for that. And that's something that, you know, you as a council, if you, you know, wish to do so, I think your support would be very welcome and, and helpful. And if, if Eileen can help that, and I'd be glad to talk to her about that, uh, you know, offline here. Uh, the other position that was very important, and I think Councilman Richards would recognize this, 
is we used to have a state public health veterinarian, David Sasaki, who was a, like a world expert in leptospirosis, brucellosis. I mean, we, you know, leptospirosis kills people here unnecessarily because we don't have the expertise. Uh, you know, we don't have a good test for leptospirosis. We should have had one long ago because it's, you know, the, it's a major problem in our state, right? I mean, it's also right now affecting Puerto Rico because of their uh, problems with water sources. So maybe, you know, since they have a big CDC center down there, it'll help raise the uh, profile of that disease. Um, but rat lung disease is also what's called zoonosis, a, a, a disease that goes from animals to people. And those are very devastating diseases uh, often. Brucellosis certainly can be. Leptorosis can kill you. Rat lung disease can kill you or severely impair you. And so having a, a state public health veterinarian, as most states have, you know, not just in their ag department, but in their health department, is very important. And I hope uh, Councilmember Richards will, would support that. And again, if you, you, know, you had a resolution supporting that, it would be helpful that, that we'd mandate that. David Sasaki was great. I don't know if any of you knew him, but he, he, was, uh, he was a world expert on leptospirosis. And uh, they didn't, um, they let that position lapse. And it was very uh, sad. I, I actually worked for the health department as an epidemiologic specialist for a year. And I worked with David Sasaki, you know, back in 2004. And it was very important that he was there and he educated uh, both the Department of Health and people on the neighbor islands. Okay, so that's something you guys could help me with, and the whole island. Uh, okay, we're, we're working on ag theft bills. We had a support to have a couple of people work with the prosecutor's office, or one at least, and that didn't go through, but the ag department funded a position. Shane Murmuro has recently started in that. And ag theft is, you know, critical. Most of our farmers are small farmers. A little loss is a big loss, right? And uh, even someone who has a few fruit trees in their front yard, you know, if somebody comes in and steals all their breadfruit or their lychees or their mangoes, that's devastating to that family, right? I mean, they depend on it for themselves or their family and neighbors. And, uh, you know, they come home and their tree is stripped bare after been waiting for months. You know, it's, it's, it's really, you know, people are very upset. We just had a meeting this last week at Kainalu about that. So I think that's an important issue. And I'll, you know, expand that. Uh, okay, the rat lung thing, I mean, <laughs> it, it was just insulting to Senator Ruderman, but this district, I mean, his district and our, and our island, the way they denied the funding to that. After, it was just totally clear we, they, that it was a uh, growing problem, but it was minimized by the health department. I mean, at the rat lung workforce, they say, well, you know, the tourism people said we don't want to put posters up. And so we got, so we, we, you know, and so they minimize the number of cases, they minimize the severity of cases, and then they deny the money to the one group that's doing something about it. And, and at UH Hill, right, Sue Jarvie's lab. So we'll push that again. I think, you know, it ended this last time for very bad reasons. And uh, people aren't denying the need for it. They just it got involved in some backroom politics, you know. So maybe the Sunshine Bill would help. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're not perfect over that, that's for sure. So uh, okay. Anyway, um, I think that's. I mean, I, I'm certainly willing to answer questions. You know, again, I I'm on the public safety, and I think the public safety stuff that Richard's doing with agriculture is really important. Uh, you know, we want to normalize people's return to society and agriculture is an area they can return and be uh, successful, but they need to have both the training while they're in prison and then some follow-up afterwards. So I think what he's proposing is great and I'm on the Public Safety Committee and Ag, so I'll support th those things. So I'm available for questions and it's good to see you guys. And good to see all you guys too. Really mahalo you guys for being here. I know it was stated earlier that Rep Todd was going to try to make it, but he ended up getting really sick, so he won't be able to make it today. So we wish him well and in good fortune, but I will turn it over for questions uh, to the council members. Um, and I have questions for each of you, probably. Um, Senator Ruderman, you talked about the tiny house bill, and when you were giving your town hall in Pahoa, I did have conversation with your legislative assistant, Mike, Michael, and um, 
my question is uh, my understanding is we already what well, we do already have in our county code the ability to do efficiency units um, of 240 square feet um, there may be other restrictions on those that I haven't really studied the issue um, if there's something that we need to change code wise I would love to work with you to make that uh, a better option but um, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure that the state needs to act on this versus the county so I would love to continue working with your office on that um, and we can answer those questions later um, with um, representative Onishi you mentioned um, that uh, you are or um, developing a list of priorities for the DOE for the schools in your district. Is that correct or is it uh, the countywide priority list? Well, actually, the DOE comes to the entire island, so it's countywide. Mm -hmm. um, they typically invite the legislators for the schools within their district. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, I went to all the schools that are within physically mm -hmm. within my district. Um, I wanted to attend the Waikia schools, the elementary, high school, uh, inter middle school, and Waikia but it was on a day that I was on Oahu, so I wasn't able to attend that. So as part of this process, the DOE has an engineering division and they go to all the schools and the principals from the schools, they do a wish list mm -hmm. and then they send it in to the district office mm -hmm. uh, or the complex office and then the complex then forwards all of the requests to the DOE engineering department. So they come out, they, took, they take a look, they look at, okay, this was on your list. We got funding last year, it reached you know, the funding, their funding ability, so it's scheduled to be funded or it's in the process of being designed, etc. So we go through that whole list and then we do a walk around the school to look at new projects or projects that didn't make the list or didn't get funded and whether or not it has uh, gotten worse or if their own custodial staff or the DAG staff on island has been able to mitigate the problem sufficiently where okay. other issues come up to priority. Okay, I, I believe I understand the process. I guess my question is uh, for schools located in my district, in particular Pahoa High School um, campus, which is a very aged, aged campus and in need of many things. Um, as opposed to KL, which is a relatively new campus and a, a quite a lovely campus, actually. Um, what were the identified needs that are uh, priority, at least in your mind, um, for that campus? For Pahua? Mm -hmm. um, Pahua is not in my district. It's in oh, Representative San Buenaventura right. and Senator Rudiman's district. Okay. So, um, you know, I'm, it, you can take that up with them or you can take it up with uh, the complex office because they'll have the list of uh, the projects that they prioritize per school within that district. So in your, in your district, you have Kao High School is I have part of your district. I have all the Kao schools, okay. Mountain View, uh, and Kau High School and Elementary School. But I also go to visit Nalehu because Nalehu is a feeder school mm -hmm. to Kiao to, High School. Right, okay. So are the, were there any um, projects that you felt needed to be um, increased in terms of the priority relative to what DOE was uh, looking at? Yeah, but okay, so DOE, say we give them $80 million for repair and maintenance. Then they go statewide they look first at health and safety projects for all schools, and then they look at other types of projects that would um, mitigate larger problems. So for example, um, uh, re-roofing of schools. Um, the, if the condition of the roof is such that painting it 
uh, will not help to improve the condition, then they generally go in for re-roofing. Um, so that's a high priority because they don't want to have leaks. They don't want to have those kinds of problems. So for uh, uh, an example would be for Mountain View. Uh, their preschool program is in portables that the roof is now leaking. So for Mountain View, that for them was their number one priority project. So hopefully it'll get funded through the repair and maintenance. The other thing that we discussed um, was whether or not the DOE should be looking at alternative methods to stop leaking, roof leaking, and roof protection. For example, like that GECO treatment, uh, which is a guaranteed, you know, it has a guaranteed life and um, it'll help protect roofs as well as stop leaking because it's more of a coating that's put over the entire existing roof. So if the roof is in decent condition, um, that might be the alternative. It's a much, much cheaper alternative than re-roofing. Um, okay. um, well, thank you yeah. for that. Um, so I, and basically, you were pretty much in agreement with the DOE on their priorities. Is that what I'm understanding? Well, I'm more in agreement with the school. Whether or not it reaches the DOE priority list okay. uh, is a is an issue I don't think we have much control okay, over. Okay, okay, understood. But what I am committed to do is if a project that the school feels is really important and it doesn't get funded, then I have the ability to introduce a bill for funding sure. or I can include it in my uh, CIP requests. Okay. So um, that would be the alternative way. And it's open to all of us. All right, well, well, thank you for that. And just a short question on where is the um, field 33, the 500 acres, where is that? Okay, it's on Stainback Highway. It's, mm -hmm. I believe, around 10 miles below the prison. Okay. So it's about halfway between Hilo. So elevation would be 4,000 feet maybe? Oh, no, way Not below even? that. Way below, way below that. that. Okay, good. Maybe closer to uh, 1,500. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, the DOH to appoint somebody with um, a medical um, background um, and also I, I would point out while we're championing that position or trying to champion um, getting an appropriate person into that position we are also underserved in our um, environmental health uh, here and I understand um, from a meeting what that was attended by Representative Todd and Senator Kahele that the environmental health uh, specialist position has basically been eliminated for East Hawaii and all we have is West Hawaii. And if that is indeed the case, if there's some way that the state could help reinstate the position, get, get somebody um, hired, because we obviously have many issues that need a more immediate response than someone traveling all the way from Kona. So um, I just want to throw that out, and yes, I will um, happily work with you on the, uh, the other thing in terms of putting together a resolution to support any efforts that you bring forth. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, thank you for that. I, I, I just want to acknowledge that, uh, you know, Rep. Nishi came to Nalayu School when I was there. And, you know, he's very healthy, he understands the system <laughs> better than I do, and uh, you guys can weigh in on those things too. You know, if one of your schools says to you, you know, how, you know, we need this, how can you help us? You know, you can work with us to try and get that. But I mean, it's complicated because as he pointed out, we found, I discovered something I had gotten funds for two years ago, got out of BNF, got to the DOE, it's sitting there, uh, not being used and, you know, even, on the huh? working on the building permit. Yeah, there's one of them, that's right. Working on a building permit, county, bin, county building permit. So I think, you know, there should be maybe some kind of interdisciplinary you know, working group some, on some level to, to help the education department because it, the Department of Education, again, it's, it's Oahu-centric. I mean, you know, that's so much of what happens in our state is caused by that bureaucratic centrality on Oahu. And, uh, you know, they hardly know what's happening here sometimes. Uh, so, I mean, you know, you think they would, but they don't, right? 
And you think they'd care, but they, you know, they don't really emotionally care. Uh, so uh, we have to, you know, stand up for our island. And I think bringing back more stuff to our island, even like, you know, people have talked about having that, a county health department the way it used to be instead of the state health department, or even having the hospitals be county hospitals the way they used to be instead of, you know, having to rely on the, you know, the dribs and drabs that, that, uh, from the state. So, I mean, there's, I think we have to think about this county as, you know, as, not quite, not independent, of course, but you know, has m more independence from the state than, than it has right now. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. For We're going to go into after 10 o'clock, obviously, uh, with a lot more questions. But um, mahalo for being patient with us as we get these questions going, uh, Mr. Richards. <clears throat> and I will try and group this all together, so I'll just throw a bunch at you at once. First of all, uh, concerning the medical officer for. Um, as mentioned previously, uh, Councilwoman and I were discussing and having a MD to fill that position. I also said a veterinarian. And uh, case point there, as was pointed out, zoonotic disease, uh, very important. And I would fully support along those. And I'm understanding I'll be drafting a resolution to help support that for you. Um, <clears throat> concerning assisted suicide, I couldn't agree with with you more. I think we need to do more work on that and I'd be very happy to help support that. So uh, going forward, invasive species was mentioned. One of the things that the Big Island faces is as we try and it ties into agriculture, I chair Water Ag Energy, uh, getting our products off of this island to other islands. And this has been discussed for some time now, facilities at the ports so we can have our um, ag commodities housed appropriately, inspected appropriately, so we can move them. Treating the Big Island as a quarantine area so we don't move our ag products off the island is not the right answer. So we need to be able to move that. And I know this was proposed years ago, um, back when Representative Suji was working on that, and I think that kind of fell through the cracks. Um, is it forthcoming? Okay, good. Good to hear that. Um, <clears throat> concerning the schools, Rep. Um, I was touring with the uh, Senate Ways and Means this last week and looking at Kohala High School, their gymnasium was built back in 1932 and has been closed for the last six months. There's efforts to have it band-aided, but we really need to look to the future for CIP and, and actually get something done there. Um, and so that's, <clears throat> that's a big concern coming forward for the Kohala community. Also, the Waimea middle school tour that with them brand new steam building which is used to be a stem building but now we refer to it as steam because we added arts great building but there's no funding for anything to go in it and so that's a, a big concern i met with people from the school yesterday so if we could put that on the radar and figure out how we can be able to put equipment into that program um egg theft <laughs> we've been discussing that for probably 20 years now and i think it's great that our uh, Mitch Roth has put Shane Moore Morrow into that position. And I think this, the state laws of making what's a felony much lower threshold for ag theft is huge. Because years ago we ran into a situation where someone stole fence posts out of a fence. And from a distance you could see the fence standing, but if cattle were put in it, the fence would lie down. Now it's a funny story, except that this, if the cattle got on the highway and someone was killed, the liability is huge, and it shouldn't belong to the rancher in that situation. They did what they're doing. So I appreciate the supports of going after ag theft because it's paramount, especially for this island. Um, one thing I did want <clears throat> to ask, um, oh, on the mini houses, I have one farmer who's actually working on developing a ag housing development right now. Um, and we're going to use it as a poster child to see how we can go forward with that. Um, we're still in discussion, and he has some ideas, so that'll be forthcoming. But I will keep you apprised um, how things are coming along with that, because I think um, we are told we can do it in this county, so we are going to test that. And Representative Lowen, um, you mentioned the $15 an hour minimum wage. Conceptually, I get it. I understand it. If you look at Seattle, University of Washington did a, a research project last summer they found contra to what they thought was going to happen with the $15 an hour. And I put that out for you. I don't know if you've read that study, if you've seen that, that work, but 
if we look at our county and look at our cost of housing, and if we look at our minimum wage, in order to support renting, you have to be making somewhere around $22, $23 an hour to order, in order to form, um, afford buying a house, it gotta be somewhere around $40 an hour. And you can do that with two people earning $20 an hour. But on the other side of the coin is the businesses. And I'm very concerned about that study coming out of UW in Seattle. So I pose that forward and I realize we're under a bit of a timeline here. Uh, like I said, I could actually have you guys sitting here all day because I got lots to talk about. So <clears throat> with that, I fully appreciate your guys' time, efforts, and input for Big Island because we need it. And I, I couldn't agree more, Representative Cregan. Big Island, I mean, we're like a little continent. We kind of have to work on a lot of stuff. And we appreciate the state's support in a lot of it. But we have to figure some of this stuff out going forward. So uh, anyway, with that, Chair, I'm going to yield. and. Um, perhaps some response or give the other council members a chance to ask questions. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ruggles. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. Um, that was really, it's been a really helpful discussion for us. Um, I wanted to give Mr. Ruderman a chance to respond to Eileen's question on the efficiency dwelling units. So I met with the mayor before the veto to try to convince him to, to I'm sorry, before the governor's veto, I met with the mayor because it all hinged on the mayor's support. Uh, and he assured me, as you folks have referred to, that here in, the, in our county, we already have the rules necessary to put ag housing on legitimate farms. And they referred to a couple of projects, and perhaps it's something that uh, Council Member Richards was referring to. They referred to a couple examples of dormitory type housing being built on some farms where they, it, it's a special permit, and they promised me that they will work with any legitimate farmer to make that available to make that happen therefore we don't need the tiny housing now that's great it's great news as far as it goes i i think if you poll 100 farmers in the state and ask them how many people know they could build a dormitory for their workers the, the answer would be zero so it's a program that exists in theory only and i think some kind of codification or clarification of this tiny house availability would be very beneficial so we can make it a reality and not a theoretical thing so does the state need to be involved i don't know either the state needs to be involved or we need to resolve this problem some other way if the county thinks we can do it with what we got then let's go ahead and do it because we're not doing it and housing is a problem and you talk about ag theft there's nothing that's going to make more sense to have ag theft than having somebody live on the farm you know so let's make this available right now no one's doing it everyone says it's not needed because we could do it now but we're not doing it now so if you don't need any state input then advertise this law or make it a reality somehow um, that's also thank you for the opportunity because I think we need to do all of the above when it comes to housing ag housing low-cost housing normal housing control the increases in, in, in cost. I think we need to do all those things. And for me, tiny houses was one component that would have been a welcome small piece of the pie to relieve it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, you mentioned affordable housing and homelessness and that you're working on that. Do you have any more details as far as what you're working on in specific? I mean, it's such a difficult issue. I think there's been a lot of suggestions for smaller things like ways we can incentivize affordable housing, some of the ways we can streamline the process a little bit, um, you know, continuing to fund homelessness or maybe being um, more specific on how we want that funding to be spent because in the past we had given 12 million to DHS um, and sort of left it open-ended for them to be able to respond as they best saw fit and have been, I think, somewhat disappointed in how that ended up getting used. Um, but again, it's such a difficult issue because it's like we need to, um, you know, work on health care, on mental health care on neighbor islands, and af affordable housing, affordable cost of living. So it's just um, one of those things that it's going to take a lot of pieces for us to get a handle on it. And it's, I think we're discussing those things. I mean, I'd love to see some really broad based tax reform where we would just stop. I mean, we tax people who make very little money that probably we shouldn't be taxing at all at this point. That money would just be better off left in people's pocket. Um, and then I think with the county, I know the county's been working on the um, short-term rental legislation. I think that's huge uh, part, of, part of that discussion as well. 
Thank you. So I really look forward to seeing that and I'll probably be weighing in too. Um, it, does anything you're working on have to do with the recent funding that went to the Hawaii Tourism Authority to work on homelessness? Um, I don't know exactly what they're doing with that. Uh, Repo Nishi might have a better idea, but uh, I'm, not I, I'm not sure I'd have to check on what their plans are. Okay, thank you. Um, and the last thing is the energy storage facilities. I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch that. What, what in specific would this piece of legislation be doing for that? Well, similar to how we have a tax credit now that um, is for renewable energy, and that can be used for individuals to put solar panels on their roof, but then it can also be for utility scale development where like a independent contractor would propose building a renewable energy project, and then they would have a contract with the utility um, to sell power to them at a rate that would then have to be approved by the PC. So same idea that we just need to create incentives for storage, both for individuals who wanna have a battery backup system on their home um, and potentially at the utility scale, because I think we'll need both going forward. And that just, the storage enables, cause right now we produce a lot of renewable energy you know, when the wind is blowing, when the sun is shining during the day in particular, but we don't have the capacity to store it and deploy it at night. So at night we switch over to fossil fuel again. And if we want to continue to move the needle on, you know, getting to 100% renewable, then it's going to inv involve um, storage. And I think that we need to push the utility in moving forward with both with storage and, you know, a grid that can handle that two-way interaction of energy um, as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then providing products for consumers as well. So if you have a um, system on your house that you have solar panels and a battery and you have, you know, storing extra energy and um, there's, you know, a time in the evening when the utility would like to pull some of that extra energy from your home. So similar to how we had the net metering program, I think that the utility needs to come up with a product for customers. Uh, I think ideally it would be something that dealt with time of use so that your rate would be lowest if you sort of focus your efforts on using more energy when energy is cheap and uh, the rates would be a little bit higher to discourage using a lot of it when energy is high, but then at the same time you would get reimbursed more if you're providing energy back to the grid um, at those times. So that's something other states have done. So moving towards a time of use model and being able to offer that to customers to sign up for. Awesome, that's great. Um, my next question is for Mr. Onishi regarding the residential community farm, um, Fuel 33. Do you know, could you tell us where that will be? If you go up Access Road to the zoo mm -hmm. and you follow that up. Steinbeck. Uh, yeah, Steinbeck Highway. If you go up um, past Peck Road, I believe, is Kulani Prison. It's another about six miles, I think, up to Kulani, mm -hmm. past that intersection. But if you come down, maybe about three miles or so, there's a field there that they used to do um, cattle ranching and they had a piggery. So that would be the location. In fact, um, the previous administration wanted to actually move Kulani Correctional Facility there. Um, I opposed that more because I didn't think that the community in that area, it would have moved Kulani Prison about a mile or mile and a half away from Waikiuka. So uh, I opposed that uh, we were able to continue the DLNR's um, agreement to allow PSD to use the Kulani Correctional Facility. Okay. And so uh, that's where it would be located. Great, thank you. How many acres is it? I think it's almost 500. Wow. Yeah, it's a large parcel. And I'm just curious, for the, the Kulani farm manager, which yes. I think is an excellent idea, do you know who that will be? Uh, I'm not involved in the selection. Okay. I think they're going through that selection now. Great. Um, and I just wanted to highlight, so the homeless funding, mm -hmm. right now, the AG was concerned that the title of the bill, which was taxation, did not meet the purpose of the bill. 
because we use general funds to fund the million dollars. Um, so we are scheduling a meeting, I believe, next week with the AG, the governor's office, and uh, Chair Luke and myself and okay. HTA to Good. try to move that forward. Thank you for that information. Um, that's all I have. Thank you all for your great work and for being here. I yield. Thank you, Ms. David. Mahalo, Chair. So I really don't have any questions, specific questions, because I can contact you later about these things. But I do want to know how, in your view, would you, um, could we help in getting, because of our timeline on getting things on the agenda, um, if you are uh, planning to reintroduce something or to introduce something new, um, how would we be able to get a first, a quick, heads up about that so we can start drafting our um, support resolutions because I'm very glad, um, Senator, that you, you shared that it does make a difference. Sometimes we sit here and we go, well, you know, we're not sure <laughs> what, what impact it, it would have. Um, so I'm very happy that, um, that you mentioned it does have a, a huge impact. So I'd like to be able to, this body be able to be proactive and, and get a head start. <laughs> so with that, um, I just um, letting us know as soon as you can so we can meet our deadlines and get something to you folks. Um, Mr. Um, Reponishi, thank you for the pahala senior center because and I know it's, it's not, not a, yet, I know it's not a, <laughs> I know it's not a firm date but you know what um, that's the first resolution I'd like to do if you, if um, you can let me know and keep me informed about that other than that I really thank all of you for your service and um, and helping us do our work